I'm working on the ultimate Elven City board. For this Elven City, I decided to use the 3D files from Printable Scenery. Printable Scenery produces heaps of awesome 3D files. I particularly like that Elven ones for this project. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I built the baseboard for this project. If you want to see a video of me painting all of these buildings, I highly recommend checking out my speed painting a 3D printed Elven City video. On to my plan. So, for a city, I decided I needed to have roads. But elves wouldn't just build their roads in nice grid patterns, so they needed to be a little bit astray. I was going to build these roads using foam core. I would take the foam core, peel one side off, and then draw a road texture on using a blunt pencil. I really don't like boards that are perfectly flat, so it's important to me that I break up the flatness somehow. To do that, I decided to take cork and use that to layer it, so that there's areas that are raised and areas that are lower. Finally, this board needs to have two configurations. It needs to either work as two separate 4x4s, or as one 6x6 for big multiplayer battles. That means that I'm going to need to use nine tiles in total, and only eight for the 4x4s. All right, with my plan all set, let's get to work. My first step was just cutting large strips of foam core. These were going to be the roads, and this was my starting point. I lay them down over the tiles just to get a grip of what I wanted it to look like. Once I was happy, I just glued these down. When I was gluing them down, I made sure that I weighed them down so that they would adhere properly and there would be no warping. After that was dry, I just um, picked, them all, picked up all the weights and I took my razor blade and I cut between each tile. I left each strip as a full piece when I glued it down. This way, they're going to perfectly line up with each other. Then I peeled off the paper on the top half and I was ready to get to work on the next step, which was breaking up the flat ground. I took these large cork sheets, you can find these at hardware stores, they're probably one of my favourite terrain making resources, and I just laid them down, making a semi-random pattern and making sure when I lay them down to break up the edges so they looked all rocky. After all the cork was glued down, I went on to texturing the board. I had a nice fine light colored sand, and I just glued that across the whole entire board pretty quickly. It was very easy. Next up was texturing the roads. All I did was scrunch up a ball of aluminium foil. This is a technique that I've seen in other videos, um, and I just put it over the top, and that gave it a vague rocky texture. As you can see here, I have my blunt pencil, and I'm starting with just a squiggly line and then filling in some kind of large flagstone brick pattern. This looked really good and it didn't take too long, so I was happy when I finished this across all of the roads. Now, in retrospect, what I should have done is gone back a second time and made all of these grooves deeper because it would have made the roads look a lot better, but I couldn't tell that until I painted it and that's something that I know now for next time and something that you can implement if you do a similar board. Next up was painting the sand. I did this very quickly. All I did was taking a brown spray can and I sprayed it across, but definitely not getting a full coverage of color. This made it really kind of blotchy and natural looking. And that was all I did for the sand. Really, really easy and a very effective result. The only thing to be careful of was that I didn't spray on the roads at all. The roads are made out of XPS foam or just extruded polystyrene. And if you get spray paint on them, they can melt, so I avoid that at all costs. With the sand done, I was ready to start painting the roads. I based these out in a nice dark grey. And then after that was done, I just did a dry brush across the whole thing. At the same time, I did this to the stones on the side of the cork. Now, looking at the road at this point, I really wasn't happy. 
But I had to get this whole entire board done, as well as all of the terrain that goes on it, in three days, so I didn't have the time to go back over this dry brush. When I peeled off the paper, it left some kind of grain texture across it. So next time I do this, what I would do is either use a higher quality foam core, or after I was done peeling it off, just do a really quick sand over the top to make it perfectly smooth. With all the painting done, next up is flocking. Flocking took a little while and was quite messy. What I needed to do was pour down my glue, spread it out, put my flock on, and then give it a little bit to dry and then tap it off and collect all the excess so there wasn't any wastage. I did this across the whole entire board with all three colors and it made a kind of natural looking appearance. I added a few tufts and flowers around the edge of the cork just to bring a bit more visual interest in. After that was done, I just sprayed across the board with some watered down glue to help seal everything down. In retrospect, I would also have added in a bit of isopropyl alcohol to this so that it really sunk in and absorbed more because a final flock comes off a little bit too easily. With that done, this board is complete. I learnt a lot that I'm going to implement in terrain projects in the future. If you want to see me painting all of the buildings that go on this train, please check out that video. This has been Conquest Creation, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please like, comment and subscribe. I also have other socials, an Instagram, a Facebook, as well as a website. Feel free to check them out if you want a sneak peek of some upcoming content. Once again, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you at my next video.